Hello, I'm Thomas Vong An, CEO and founder of Duolingo. Due to the recent AWS server outage, our most recent quarterly report has looked a little weaker than usual. And for the next few minutes, we desperately need your attention as your VC funding will greatly support our mission of spreading accessible language learning to every corner on Earth. Introducing our Chief Technologist Officer, Evan Von Ahn, my cousin, and this is our quantitative analyst at the firm. He will walk you guys through a lot of uh, basics, basic stuff. So we actually need your funding to do a lot of our a lot of our daily um, operating needs. So, for example, as a company, we need to hire labor. Um, we actually have to pay them. It's apparently a new law. Um, also, we need to continue um, paying for our office building in East Liberty. So we actually do require the funds to do that as well. We have a lot of consumers, um, a lot of households, a lot of people will pay for the premium subscription to our app. And in addition, we also have some businesses which subscribe um, to Duolingo in general. We do have some competitors, but we're actually a lot better than all of them. So we like we like Babel, okay? And this is another app, but we don't. They're bad. We we have more market. We have more market, okay? So we have more consumers. Also, we have books, but like. Who reads books nowadays? Okay, these are also bad. Okay, so what's better than all of these? Us, Duolingo. Okay? And so we also do collaborate with some indigenous communities to help preserve their language. And so if we don't have our money, we can't do that. See, no money equals no projects. And that's bad. So we want your money to help do projects. So here we have a uh, one of our real interns, uh, an alum of Shadyside Academy here. and. I want Elaine to briefly address, you know, how her experience was here, how she ended up here, and how she was compensated for her great work you offer here. Yeah, it's, it's a hard subject to talk about, but I woke up one day and found myself in the basement of the office kidnapped by the owl um, and held hostage for an entire summer, 10 weeks. Next question. We're going to ask Elaine, uh, you know, a little bit about her struggles here, challenges, uh, some memories, and just general what the what working here felt like. Yeah, I faced a lot of challenges. A lot of people were like very mean to me about how bad I was at ping pong. And I lost a lot of rounds of Mario Kart, played a lot of games. Uh, that was really, really challenging. It was a really hard time. Like I'd spend around like 15 minutes meeting with my team a day, and then like maybe two minutes coding. And the bugs I ran into in my code were like impossible to figure out. Did a lot of code reviews uh, of very, very bad unreadable code. And it was just an altogether very challenging experience. Uh, I also heard you did some uh, marketing, marketing experiences here. I uh, love to hear about that. Uh, let's talk to our investors about the marketing. Yeah, the marketing here, I'd say, is, is, is quite incredible. Uh, I was kidnapped once. From, from my job playing ping pong and put in a video, they put they put an owl head on me uh, and made me dance to the Saja Boy song. So that was, that, was, that was a very traumatizing experience. As a software company, um, our capital essentially involves two parts. It's twofold. One is obviously our hardware and software infrastructure, so that's like our servers, computers, stuff of that nature. The other part is the labor, which you know we have engineers like Elaine, brilliant engineers, to help us, you know, make the development team smooth. Um, and you know whether we invest in new servers or uh, hire new workers, um, it's entirely up to if we think the decision, the added marginal investment, is worth the input. We measure that, you know, by trying to map out the potential income they would generate and uh, some of that nature. One defining feature of the Duolingo app is the streak feature, and we continuously iterate on that. So one thing, one feature that I know about is that there's there's something called a friend streak now, in which you can friend people on Duolingo, and you can start a friend streak, which encourages people to come back, increases user retention and engagement, and because there's now that accountability aspect between friends. Um, and yeah. 
So you might ask, does the demand for a business ever really change? Well, it actually does, okay? So let's say, let's say Blackpink, okay? Let's say they release this new album, okay? In the US. And what do people do when they see a Blackpink album? Naturally, they all want to translate it. So what people will do is, okay, our we, the demand for this goes up, and therefore more people want to use the lingo, okay? And that's good for us. So that's something good. Um, on the other hand, let's say that, like, let's say things that could change our um, supply. Let's say AWS was bankrupt, okay? That would be really bad for us, okay? Supply of the lingo would drop. They're probably zero, okay? No, not great. Okay, on the other hand, what's the more of this black thing? Let's see, let's see what it happens, for example. Okay, like we have we have our market here. We have the supply curve, demand curve, okay? Okay, and this is our this is the equilibrium price and quality quantity of the lingo. Okay, but what happens whenever we have more black pink? Okay, demand goes up, the curve shifts. That's great. And what happens? The equilibrium quantity and price both go up. And this means profit, okay? This means profit. And more money we can spend on our other ventures. Do I sometimes regret? making Duolingo? Yes. What else could I be doing with my time? More philanthropy? Like, donating? It's an awesome classroom here. Could be building a B2B SaaS? GPT wrapper? Um, uh, how to cheat on your interviews? But I'm more dedicated. I care more about spreading accessible language learning to every corner of the globe. So some of you may ask, what is this bad thing done to our business? Okay, actually, it made us a lot better. Because before, before who was like, ooh, we have a pandemic. Our sales went like this, okay? Really, really up, really good, okay? Because people, when they have nothing to do, actually somehow for some reason decide to learn languages. It's, it's really interesting. So we actually, during this time, we would need to spend even more money on AWS. And so let's say, for example, like right now, AWS, for some reason, they decide to make their prices really, really high. Okay, so that means our average variable cost goes up a lot. And you know what happens when average variable cost goes up a lot? We have to shut down, okay? No more doing it, no more doing it. It's gone, okay? So the other question is, how are we regulated by the government? I mean, why would we be? Well, you see, we are a publicly traded stock, and therefore we're regulated by the SEC, okay? So we can't do something. For example, Starbucks Oxley says that we actually have to keep records of our emails, so we can't do something called financial fraud, okay? That's bad. We are operating, interestingly, within an oligopoly, okay? And this is kind of cool. Now, why might, why might we be an oligopoly? Well, the lingo is kind of like Instagram. We're, we're like a network good, okay? So, more users, more value, okay? So, this is a prohibitive barrier to entry because let's say, like, let's say that, let's say you're, like, um, Ji Chen Wang Enterprises, okay? And you want to create a new language learning app. Oh, but look at this, look at this! The lingo has this many customers already! They're not taking any of them because your product isn't this good, okay? So, one, we're a network good. Two, have you seen how good the lingo is at advertising? They're just really good, okay? non price competition, Marker of all God. And finally, the top five firms in the business of language learning account for 90% of all customers. Okay? This is like textbook like oligopoly. It's Thomas Vaughn here again, founder and CEO of Duolingo. And at the end of this video, we're excited to announce our future plans. We're rebranding to Duolingo.ai. To prevent the outages like the AWS one that caused our quarterly report to struggle. We assure you that your investment will go towards the most cutting end driven technologies. We're going to employ our mission using machine learning driven solutions, big data, quantum technologies. We will fund our own computing platform from the very beginning as a AI native, AI driven, AI first company. We believe that in this world, if we can make machines learn, then our students around the globe can also learn. Thank you.